everybody, and welcome to Comics News Today. I am Chester C. Busby III, and of course, I am joined by a very large panel today, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, not only we will be talking about news a little bit later, but we got a couple of guests, which we will get to momentarily. Uh, keep in mind, of course, that we have all our links down below, uh, not only for our FanSpeak uh, page on Facebook, which we'd love for you to come over and join in. Uh, we're getting a lot of people uh, uh, coming over and being part of that, sharing their comic books, what they're buying, their art, uh, their opinion. And uh, we want to have everybody involved in that. Also know that uh, my links are down below that uh, on my Twitter and Facebook. You can get in touch with me and uh, tell me, Chester, put me on the show. And Chester will do that because this is Fan Speak After Chester, all. put me on the show. Uh, you are on the show, Booster. Glad to have you, dude. Whoa, it's that easy. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, and, of course, uh, you can also count, uh, contact me if you'd like to be an artist on the Drone Recorded Fan Edition. And, of course, the Drone Recorded Fan Edition is amazing because uh, when you win that, you actually get a chance to go sit over on the Pro Edition. And uh, that show, of course, will have the occasional actual legend show up on it. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, like I said, we got a pretty full panel here. So let's get right over to it. We have a Pixel Trader with us today. <gasps> Hi. Hey there. How you doing, man? Good to be here. Eh, doing really well. Got a little bit of sleep, and I'm uh, pretty fired up today. Well, that's good. Sleep tends to do that. You should try it more <laughs> often. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, cool, dude. Glad to have you here. Uh, and, of course, we are also joined by, uh, uh, as he had already spoken up, our very happily and uh, uh, thoroughly oiled uh, Kiwi from uh, uh, down there in that New Zealand place. He's also our resident pie expert, by the way. Well, it's Booster. I do all those things. I do all those things at the same time, Chester. It's incredible how I talented know. I am. Uh, yeah. It is incredible. It is. And we're very happy to have you here, and that picture is still disturbing. How uh, How is my happy, adorable Kiwi disturbing? Because it, what is wrong like with it you? wants to steal my soul. That's why, Booster. You know what? At least mine looks like the animal it's supposed to be. Uh, excuse me. That is a perfect representation of a bear. It is a panther. A no, it is panther. not. It is a bear. What do you know about panthers? you got wallabies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, guys, we're also joined New by... New has no wallabies. <laughs> well, so you say. Uh, but uh, we're also joined by the creator of Ignition itself. Uh, we have Todd Melrooney. How you doing, dude? Oh, I'm doing great. And I'm really excited about today's show. we got some great guests. And they have awesome news, so this is going to be awesome. They do. Uh, and, of course, we're also joined by the Denali Lama. Are you feeling namaste-ish today? namaste -ish. <laughs> Well, are you here feeling... to namaste? <laughs> right. Timing wow, there. Wow, that timing. was worth Timing, that was timing. Bad. Yeah. yeah, that, that was. Timing. Yeah. Well, mm. tell us how you are there, Denali. I know I'm sitting here on a beautiful, beautiful sunny day with a cup of coffee and a bunch of friends, so I'm extremely happy. How about you, dude? It's a wonderful evening for me. Uh, I see the stars because all the lights are out, oh, except nice. for the computer. Uh, but I'm fantastic, and I'm excited for today's show. So. Yeah. So am I, actually, and uh, yeah. uh, we might as well jump right into that after we all have all our mm -hmm. formalities done. I do see a bunch of people over here in the chat. We do appreciate you. Uh, we have uh, Hail Raven has now changed their name to Hail Raven. <clears throat> okay. Uh, JP4 says, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, we have Model 3 in here. Absolutely happy. Good Jimmy Ortiz. Excellent. Uh, and uh, we're getting a bunch of highs and hellos from everybody. Happy to have you in here. we got P.S. Melter. How you doing? Uh, just keep in mind, guys, uh, of course, you know, that whole sub link thing, uh, like thing we will mention at the end. But uh, hitting that share button uh, really does help us out. Uh, let all your friends and family and your extended uh, community know what's going on over here so they can come and join us. So Tell please. everyone. Tell everybody. Please do that. Everyone. Yes, and I would also encourage our guests to do that, too, if they would like. Uh, but uh, let's get right to our guests here. Uh, we are joined today by Jamie Tindall and Benny Powell, and they are the creators of White Widow. And uh, we've seen a lot of activity from these guys, and uh, they have uh, Indiegogo that's going on currently. But uh, uh, let's not have me tell you about that. Let's have them. Let's start out with the artist here, uh, because uh, usually, if uh, if I'm correct, the uh, uh, the writers tend to have a lot more to say than the artist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, okay. Let's start out here, and let's uh, say hello to Jamie. How you doing, man? Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you for having me on your podcast, and it's uh, great to be here. Where are you guys located? You guys are talking about Sunshine? 
Uh, yeah, we're all of this is very international group you're looking at here. Uh, I am in Japan. Uh, Booster is in New Zealand. Uh, Denali is somewhere in the East Coast of America. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where Todd lives or do I want to know. Uh, and Pixel, oh, I yeah. believe, is on the West Coast. Yep. San oh, Diego. that's cool. Oh, San Diego. I love San Diego. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's, you know, we don't want to talk about the other places in California. Uh, but uh, San Diego <laughs> seems to be better. Uh, where you go? Where about are you from in the world? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis, right around in the middle. middle. Nice. Yeah, right. Dead smack in the middle. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I I visited there. I used to be a musician, and there are some, you know, a lot of places like like to talk about their barbecue, but uh, there's oh, yeah. really good barbecue there, dude. Yeah, it's really nice. We live in a house. Uh, my wife and I bought a house that was built just after the Civil War, so it's pretty cool. Oh, uh, neat, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so, uh, of course, uh, what we want to do, we just want to start out first, very simply, uh, tell us who you are, tell us what you're doing, and then we'll jump over here to Benny and have him do the same, and then we'll have a conversation you guys uh, together talking about your project. So, just, you know, who are okay. you, man? Uh, I've been a comic book artist for, I think, maybe six years now. Um, I got my start with Zenscope Entertainment, but uh, prior to that, I was a creative director for a bunch of software companies, and... Um, I lived in Canada most of my life. I grew up in Canada and uh, I'm Canadian, but I'm also American. I've got dual citizenship. But uh, okay. when I was in Canada, I was a creative director for kind of the equivalent of the New York Times in Canada, um, online creative director. And then same thing for like Vogue magazine, Canada, on various magazines and stuff. And then I ended up in the States with a software company in California in Venice Beach. And uh, while I was there, that's when I started drawing again. I hadn't drawn for about 17 or 18 years. And started drawing because I would see like Image and Aspen Comics was there and a bunch of the comic book companies that I grew up with in the 90s were all based basically right around the corner from where I lived. And I started going to a couple of comic cons and then I started drawing and then I met Scott Campbell for the first time at San Diego Comic Con and I was watching him draw and I was like, damn it, that's exactly what I took in school. So I started drawing more and more. And then I went to uh, Long Beach Comic Con with uh, just a handful of drawings showed him to Aspen Comics and I met Vince Hernandez there and he told me to go check out Zenscope because I drew the sexy ladies and then they picked me up right away for a cover and I've been drawing covers ever since. Well, and that, now I draw. Yeah, I yeah, that, pretty much draw for everybody. <laughs> well, first of all, six years. Uh, that's impressive because what we're looking at is impressive. Uh, and uh, we'll, well, it's OK. We'll forgive you for being half Canadian and. Uh, mm -mm. Hmm. You know, that's okay. Yeah, so it is okay. It's un it's unfortunate your Canadian birth, but that's okay. We'll love you anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, but uh, excellent, dude. Uh, uh, let's come over here to Benny and then let's say hello to him. Uh, how you doing, Benny? Hey, nice to nice to see you guys. Oh no, absolutely, well, dude. And uh, we got a very interesting project to talk about. Uh, of course, I'm I'm uh, white boxing here, uh, Jamie, and I'll come over and white box you. Uh, so uh, uh, please do the same. Tell us about yourself, man. Who are you? How did you get involved with Jamie, etc.? Those kind of basic things. Um, sure. Yeah, I I started out uh, actually. Uh, I wanted to be an artist, so of course, uh, you know, whenever I was doing the convention circuit and stuff. I, I was being trained by the, the late great Al Williamson to be an inker as a, as a way in. Took my samples to Archie Goodwin at uh, Dallas Fantasy Fair, and he saw my uh, storyboards and everything. Asked me who wrote the story because he didn't recognize it. When I told him it was me, he said, "You ever think you might be a better writer than artist?" Uh, <laughs> so, that was subtle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he's like, you might make it one day, kid, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, he got me an internship, actually, at, even though he was at DC, he got me an internship at Marvel. And within my first two weeks there, I sold my first story to, to Marvel. Um, and so while still being an intern, I, I broke in as a, as a, a freelancer. And it just snowballed from there. Um, and this was during the whole Age of Apocalypse. So my very first story was an alternate Age of Apocalypse story for What If, uh, called What If Legion had killed Magneto. Um, At least it wasn't Squirrel Girl. So, no. Um, uh, although that would be a, a fun one. Um, <laughs> so we did, uh, uh, I, I did that. I, I started working for a bunch of people and did really well until 
during the Marvel bankruptcy years when all of a sudden I found both of my editors fired the same day. I decided, you know, I might want something a little more stable. Went from there out into the world of marketing where I landed at Priceline.com. Was the writer for Priceline.com and then later IBM. And uh, back in 2007, 2008, when the recession hit, um, I I decided, you know what, I, I missed comics. And so I came back and launched a web comic in 2010 that just, it, it, uh, called Wayward Sons Legends. Uh, wow. We were the we were the crazy ones who did a page a day every day for three and a half years, um, full page comics, uh, not just strips. So uh, we did, you know, that took off really well and and really launched uh, Red Giant. And then from Red Giant, we now have the Absolute Comics Group. I met Jamie. Uh, it was what was it two years ago at uh, MegaCon. MegaCon. Um, uh, my wife actually was the person who she had she had got uh, a art book from Zenoscope, and she immediately fell in love with his art. I, I mean, just it was all she could talk about literally on the car ride home. Mm. So the next day, um, uh, I, I went to get actually get for something from J. Scott Campbell that was sold out, and um, in order to, uh, I, I happened to see uh, a Phoenix artwork that jamie had done that i knew she would love um and so you know went by his booth we struck up a conversation and in very short period of time we ended up finding that you know we we had shared a lot of the same aesthetics and and storytelling ideas and stuff and it snowballed from there uh, i've loved working with him ever since so that's that's how we got started working together Wow. Well, that is an absolute, uh, uh, you've done quite a bit, man. Uh, that's, uh, I recognize a lot of those things you were throwing off there. That is very cool, dude. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, that actually gives me even more confidence about, uh, your project, uh, cause the art is stunning, but, uh, having a writer with experience is, uh, is a very, very good thing. Now I'm going to come over here real quick and I'm going to, uh, show everybody, uh, the, uh, projects that are going on. Uh, now this area here is, uh, Jamie's project, uh, art book, uh, volume seven, which is on Kickstarter currently. It's got 12 days to go. Uh, for those of you who are looking at the Japanese in there and wondering, oh, what does that mean? Well, it's about $22,000. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, pretty successful. I'd say for, uh, for a sketchbook it's really good. And of course the art is absolutely killer here. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we'll, we'll come back and then talk to uh, talk about it as Jamie would like uh but the main project i'm assuming we'll be talking about today is this one the white widow expanded comics universe uh now uh why don't you guys um uh just uh, go ahead and take uh take a, a few minutes here and tell us about this project and uh uh already it's sitting here you're sitting at uh your indiegogo here and it's sitting at four thousand uh three hundred sixty one dollars it's got four days left uh but from what i understand this is not the uh, first run of this project. Uh, can you explain this to us, what the project is and, uh, and the backstory, please? Yep, Benny, um, go ahead with that one. Sure. Uh, what we wanted to do was uh, really, you know, we, we weren't very familiar with Indiegogo, and so we wanted to kind of do a very best run. We'd already done a Kickstarter for just White Widow, number one, and it, uh, it did very well. Um, between it and Backer Kit, um, it was in the six-figure mark, uh, Sweet. and you know we're very thankful. Well, I want to say that you know very thankful. One of the things though that we let everyone know right up front is, you know, we're not just you know buying cars and you know running <laughs> running around. We really believe both Jamie and I believe in reinvesting, and this was uh, White Widow was from the onset the centerpiece of the uh, an entire universe of comics so what you see here are um all of what we call the absolute comics universe so the imprint is absolute comics group and so these are a shared universe of comics of which white widow literally sits dead center she's she's really the glue that that puts all of the universe together. Um, uh, she ties into 
every book and we'll begin i can i'll give this minor minor spoiler we'll begin to truly cross over in issue three of white widow oh. so we we reinvested a lot of that um so uh, but you know everything we get we we use to further and do cooler things um one of the other things we did during the white widow kickstarter campaign which you can see on the indiegogo is jamie um uh, we used Jamie's art to, uh, and we created um, six painted covers uh, for the majority of the titles that she crosses over with, um, and those are available on one of the tiers as well. If you if you scroll down uh, to, I think it's tier three, mm-hmm. um, you'll see Jamie's artwork, which is always phenomenal. And what we did that's really fun, we call these the White Widow variants. White Widow actually appears as a, like, hidden uh, Easter egg in there on those right there. She's an Easter egg in in each one of those covers. I see. And uh, not just... just, uh, I'm getting a little uh, bit of uh, playback. Is someone uh, have their uh, YouTube on? Okay, it's gone now. Good, good, good. Uh, But yeah, this art's really good. But actually, I would say uh, all the art is really good. I'm loving this dual identity pick here from uh, uh, whoever drew that. But uh, there's a lot of great art over here at uh, Absolute Comics Group. Uh, But uh, excellent, dude. Now, I'm sure... Yeah, we... we... uh... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I... I was just going to say that was actually Brandon Peterson. So... (laughs) Awesome. Uh, well, I am showing uh, the page here, but I'm going to get off of this real quick, and I'm going to come over to the uh, Hangouts, uh, and I'm going to let uh, uh, Jamie go ahead and uh, uh, show what he has to show, uh, because uh, he prepared a bunch of stuff, so I'll leave that on like that. Um, well, uh, yeah, no, uh, let me just come over here to chat real quick, and I'll come back to you guys in a second here. Um, uh, we see that uh, not Joshua Hughes is here. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're not kidding anybody. Uh, we got John uh, Dillard in, gaming the system here. He says, yo, 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 what's uh, Chuparos? I don't know what that means, but okay. Chumparos. It was, it was really offensive, I thought. I think he was probably attacking you. I'm sure yeah. he did. He says, sorry, yeah. Mr. I apologize. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It hurt uh, my feelings a little. Yes. Well, they are picking on you quite a bit today, but that's all right. That's that's why you're here uh, to absorb the okay. shield. You will. You will. It's true. It's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I see. Basically, everyone here is just uh, kind of interacting with each other and just having a listen, I guess. Uh, all right. But I'll come back over here to chat uh, a little bit later. Keep in mind, guys, if uh, you have any questions or anything you'd like to say to the guys uh, we have here today, please. Uh, don't uh, feel free to uh, drop that in the chat and we will read it and uh, have them answer it. Okay. Uh, but all right, let's come back over here. So now um, I, what I want to know is who's uh, who created uh, white widow. Is, is this uh, Jamie's creation or is this Benny's creation? Uh, how did, how did that happen? Um, it's both our creations. Uh, Benny came up with the backstory. Um, I came up with the visuals for the character and we both decided we wanted a, like a strong female character that could, kind of just like a creation story where she really has no idea what's going on right away and then eventually develops into the superhero that is as benny will say we're not sure if she's good or evil um just yet um that's like time will tell um but the visuals i created the the visuals and benny created the great backstory to her um that gives us lots of options to do different story arcs uh benny could talk a little bit about her backstory and i can talk a little bit about the visuals well go for it Sure. Uh, one of the things, actually, and, and Jamie doesn't give full credit, like this was truly collaborative. I will say that, you know, it, mm-hmm. it, it would be basically I would get an idea and I'd say, hey, what about this? And he would have an idea. So there was a lot of back and forth. Um, uh, one of the things, um, having started out trying to be an artist, I, I, I've never <laughs> you can you don't have to be pigeonholed, you know, uh, you don't have to be just a writer, just an artist. In This is truly a collaborative storytelling medium and artists are storytellers too. It's just, mm. they happen to do it most often with their pencils. And that's why you do see so many great story, uh, artists who become great storytellers, uh, great writers outright themselves. Um, so one of the things that Jamie had, had thrown out there was what if she has some disease or stuff like that? 
Um, and he had, he definitely, he had the name right from the beginning. I mean, I think that might've been the very first thing. So I, I sat down and I started actually researching both white widow spiders, actually, uh, technology that, that exists or is being, uh, uh studied, um, uh, technology that's kind of on the forefront or of, of development as well as. Um, genetics and and stuff like that. So there was a lot of research that I did and, and went into this character. And what we did further was we also wanted to tie her into the universe as a whole. So it's funny you bring up dual identity. Her parents work for the organization that um, uh, that created the dual identity character. So oh, I see. there is a direct tie-in um however they're they're like the scientists behind the technology that powers dual identity just in different sectors the mother they're both in research and development the mother is a bio uh, uh, bi uh biogeneticist the father is a biotechnician um and so when the daughter was born with a rare disease they stole some technology and infused and basically infused her DNA with that of a white widow. Didn't give her any powers. Didn't do anything other than white, uh, make her hair turn white um, as she grew up. And one of the actual things about a white widow spider is they have uh, incredible, um, uh, uh, like resilience and, and and ability to regenerate. Mm -hmm. So I figured this would be cool to combat this rare genetic disease that she has but that's going to break down eventually and it does when she's in college as a young woman and so the father decides to take and steal the tech that actually powers the dual identity character and that's when they get caught and all all heck gets uh, breaks loose so well, and it kind of goes uh, that you're tying now is the like that that is cool yeah. it just uh, uh and is it the organization uh, Jamie, just keep mm -hmm. in mind I have you white box. You can scroll through your art, dude. Okay. Oh, sure. Cool. Go, go ahead. Um, I was gonna say. So since you already have this tie to dual identity, that does that mean that this organization is also tied to the other titles that you were mentioning as well, or showcasing for those other variants art, saying that these are all connected since she's the centerpiece. Um, the center uh, part of that's. Part of that centerpiece is the organization as well the the, or, the organization is a um independent black uh black ops or organization uh that's actually um it's called the group um and they literally are spies for hire by the u.s government that means that they either support or sometimes try and uh, subvert or thwart or uh, things such as this, uh, many of the other groups out there. In fact, we have a spinoff, which we'll talk about maybe perhaps in a future thing that is literally a, um, uh, that Jamie and I are developing, that is literally a, um, uh, their rival organization. I see. So, um, so yes, there is a direct tie. And sometimes, for instance, she may encounter another character in our universe trying to find support or help against these people because she's absolutely being hunted literally from panel one, uh, page one, splash page one of issue one by this crew. Wow. <laughs> so we jump right into it. Uh, they they killed their killed her father. Um doesn't doesn't know if her mother's dead. It seems like her mom's dead as well, uh, and she is being hunted um, by that. So, oh, cool, man. Uh, now, just keep in mind, uh, you can linger on those shots a little longer, Jamie, if you'd like. Uh, let people get a okay. good look at them. Um, 
also in the hang- a little too fast. Yeah, a little bit fast. Uh, but uh, in the <laughs> Hangouts, uh, guys, I just put the link to the video if, if you're not on it already. It sounds like Benny is. Uh, but uh, just uh, make sure to do us a favor and uh, share that out to your community, please. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's incredible art. Um, and uh, I guess uh, let me come over here to uh, uh, Todd. And, um, uh, Todd, do you have any questions for these guys? Yeah. Um, well, first, let me say they sent me a package of of PDFs of of the line of books, and I've looked through them all, Chester. And you know me, I'm pretty picky um, when it comes to independence, sort of, uh, you know, especially having beautiful covers that Jamie does, and 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 some of the exclusive covers, but the interiors and the coloring and everything is very, very pro, very top notch. Um, there's I, I look through them all and there I have no complaints. These are these are quality books. Um, it's almost too bad on the uh, on the Indie, Indiegogo that you can't click and see some pages. But I'm you know it, I'm a testament of that. Then I spotted something. Spotted something that uh, sort of secret wish of mine. <laughs> they got Elaine Lee to come back to comics, and I'm wondering. I'd love to hear how they did that. Cool. Uh, she's, she's a friend of mine. I've, <laughs> I've known her. I, uh, that's the funny thing is, is, um, uh, this is the comics community is a very small community and everyone tends to know everyone else. Um, or it's like one to two degrees of separation at most. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I've known her. <sighs> gosh, since the, the, the mid nineties. And so what I wanted was a, I can't write everything. I created, I created eight of the titles or created and, or wrote eight of the titles out of those nine titles. Uh, first defense is the only one I have nothing to do with. Um, but I actually really love first defense. Um, it's such a bizarre book. And, I was like, I wanted to write this story. So I'll give you a quick little synopsis of the story behind dual identity. Dual identity, and why it's D-U-E-L, it's not dual, um, She's is called that because uh, imagine like if there was this Wonder Woman character who suddenly came into our world, um, the first bona fide superhero. Um, she's, uh, she's caught on uh, a YouTube video and then shortly makes her debut and, and saves the day and everyone loves her. She's awesome. Um, except that's totally BS in reality. She's a super spy augmented by nanotechnology who was created by this, the group, this black ops or organization. And while she was on an op, uh, she was video uh, videotaped on someone's smartphone <laughs> and posted on YouTube. So what the, what the government did was the spin doctors went in to work, uh, went, in, uh, went, went in and said, let's create a lie so big everyone will believe it. So now she, here she is, the stone cold killer black ops agent having to pretend to be a goody goody superhero. So thus the dual identities. And I, for Elaine Lee, I wanted to get a, a woman to write this because I wanted a, kind of a woman's perspective of what would that be like to, to try and reconcile these, these two different, uh, vastly different roles and stuff. And so, and I've always been a fan of her stuff as well. So yeah, it was it was a no-brainer. I, she was literally the first person I called. So, wow, there you go. That's great. Uh, and this art is absolutely killer, Jamie. But uh, please slow it down, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, it this really. I guess you really got a lot of inspiration from uh, J. Scott Campbell because we were actually me and Chester and another uh, friend of ours, uh, Willie, on his channel where we were actually reviewing his last sketchbook yep. and his line art and work. So, you know, just seeing your line work and art actually kind of was invoking the same image and feelings that I was seeing as Campbell's 
with his line art. Oh, thank um, you. And your face, so, uh, the, not the body, but your face definitely has an, an uh, uh, anime feel to it as well. A manga yep. feel to it. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, is this uh, something that inspires you, uh, the uh, manga? Uh, yeah, I was like, I grew up in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. And then when I really got into comics books, is pretty much when like Image started. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was a huge fan of like everyone in Image, which is kind of funny because I was always fanboying all the guys in Image. And I know all of them very well, like enough that they see me at Comic Cons, we say hi. And it's kind of funny that, you know, like, Mark Silvestri and, and, you know, Scott Campbell, like I know them on a personal level, same with Joe Benitez and Mark Brooks. And I mean, name the artist, I probably say hi to them or have gone out for dinner with them. Um, but I was always influenced by the art, like when I was growing up of, I loved anime. I grew up on Robotech. I grew up on Voltron and Hanna-Barbera. And then when Image started, I really liked all the artwork for Image. And that's kind of when I started drawing more anatomy, even though when I was in university, I was trained as an actual like, like uh, anatomical artist, um, the kind that would do like police sketches for basically wow. the police department. Um, so I was just influenced by everyone at Image. I was a big fan of Michael Turner, Scott Campbell, uh, Mark Silvestri, Jim Lee, uh, McFarland, like all these guys. And when I started drawing on my own, um, I just sort of like, kind of like. I guess when you start drawing, you draw a lot like the guys that you like, and then you like other people, and then you like other people, and then all those different styles start to combine into your own style. And I took art and history in school, and that's kind of what happened, like even during the Renaissance. Like you got the four Ninja Turtles, you know, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo, but all those guys were influenced by the people that came before them, mm. and they just adopted the things that they liked into their own art and then came up with new art and new ideas. So um, yeah, I'm heavily influenced by all of them. I love Campbell, I know him very well. Um, I like Joe Benitez's detail. I love Michael Turner's eyes and faces. Um, I liked uh, Jim Lee's power poses. I like, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, McFarland's, kind of like his humor, his his little like takes on humor in his art. Um, I always liked Silvestri's, uh, just his line art, Sylvester's line art was always good. And then I later found out that Sylvester's line art is really, really jagged. And it was Joe Weems that did a lot of the inking for it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just influenced by a lot of guys in the industry. Well, it's, uh, is impressive uh, for sure. This is really killer art. Uh, we do have a question from the chat. Uh, March hair says, mm -hmm. um, uh, will you, will this be going into the stores after the campaign? I. Uh, Yes, it is actually. So there's two. Um, let me see if I can find them for you. There are two covers that should be coming out next week. Uh, they would be, of course, I can't find them. I, I can actually show the the actual books if you want. Yeah, okay. Benny has the two covers. Uh, this is the artwork for one of them on the screen right now. Wow. And then this is the other one right here. But Benny has got this, the live ones, which both have foil on them, um, and he can show you those through his his screen. Yeah, I got Benny uh, yeah. a white box. So go ahead and hold it up there to the camera. Let us see it. Look at that. Look so at this that. is these are holographic foil, um, as you can cool. see. Oh wow! Yeah, that is beautiful, <laughs> and dude. It, it literally goes edge to edge, and then trying to get in here to where you can see. If you can see, even the webbing cuts into it. There's so much detail. Uh, I, you know, it, the I. I have never, I'm not trying to, to tout this, but when when Jamie actually said he wanted this design, I'll be honest with you, I was like, I don't know if we could, they can even do this. I've never seen anything this intricate. And boy, did they. Um, it's beautiful, dude. Who did that for you? Who? What, what uh, printing company did that? Uh, AM Print Solutions. Um, that just screams 90s. That takes me back. And then Amen. here is the... Uh, do they do holographic stuff anymore? Uh, I'm talking uh, about like comics that, that in general and such. The printer can do anything pretty much. <laughs> did you find but, their, uh, did you find their pricing competitive with some of the other more standard printing companies? Yeah, uh, it's the lowest cost printer out there. And period. they put that out. Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. I, I, AM yeah. Solutions. Oh. Yeah, I wrote it down, AM, dude. <laughs> AM dot com you can go to 
Um, wow. But yeah. as you can see, it's, you know, and the interior, it's not skimpy. It's, you know, gloss. Hey, show them the particular yeah. one. <laughs> oh, this one, you know, was a, it, it actually is part of what slowed us down just a bit, but I think it, everyone said it's absolutely worth it. Um, so here's the lenticular. This is the, the uncut sheet. Oh, wow. I see. And could you explain to me what, the, what, the, the, what you mean by lenticular in this, uh, in this case? It's animated. Oh, meaning uh, it's meaning it has a three D effect. I'm not seeing it. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe the, it does. Oh, her costume. Camera. Watch her costume. Oh, there you go. See, yeah. see her costume. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that is awesome. Uh, now watch her on the back cover. Her face. Oh, oh yeah. I see it. Oh, okay, okay. No, it turns all white. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, yeah, the cut, the, the the mask. Yeah, all right. That that pose reminds me of um, species. <laughs> Did he take bit, that yeah. reference, uh, Jamie, <laughs> from that back cover? Species. Yeah. Have you ever seen that '90s horror film? It was with I think oh, Natasha, water. and yeah, it's a. Uh, it kind of reminds Geiger, that pose. Yeah, it's Geiger inspired. Yeah, uh, movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think maybe a long time ago. I know oh, the one you're oh, talking about. Doesn't she have to like mate with somebody? Yeah, yeah. that's it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's a it's <laughs> exactly yeah. Literally, it's about her trying to get pregnant. Got it? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I was saying the the pose in that that back, um, the backside for the back cover on that reminded me of that pose that they had for the poster. I was wondering if that was a reference um, that you were taking, or maybe. It's, no, <laughs> when you work for a Zenscope, that's what they call the standard butt shot. <clears throat> mm. mm -hmm. So the standard butt pose. Um, yeah, a lot of my poses come from Victoria's Secrets books um, or just kind of standard power poses. Awesome. I don't really. Yeah, I I, I don't even remember the well, species movie. <laughs> now that you've mentioned Victoria's Secrets, I do think it's time to ask Booster for a question. Oh. I do. I do have questions. Mm -hmm. I have one question in particular. Uh, I just so I just googled White Widow, Widow. Are you aware that everything that comes up is cannabis? Oh yeah, we know now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is this comic book just trying to promote the devil's lettuce to the God fearing public? <laughs> no, we had no idea actually that uh, mm -hmm. White Widow. Was... <laughs> no, seriously, we didn't. Um, A Monty, y'all. We. Uh, <laughs> we built the uh, we built the character, built the White Widow, and then uh, I went to go buy the White Widow website, and it's a it's a cannabis website, and then that's kind of when we found out. <laughs> mm hmm. No, it's pretty good. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I spoke up and bought, so it was totally new to me. You heard it here first, folks. This reporter just exposed their devilish wares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've 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 never. I don't like aspirin, <laughs> so oh, <laughs> last thing I want is anything to, to mess with my brain. That's insanity, um, so. you know that. Now, are those holographic uh, covers that you showed just now in the animated uh, print, are they going to be part of the Indiegogo as a perk as well, or is those are exclusive to the, L, uh, the LC stores, the LCS? Th those, stores? Are, those are all available, both. Well, those are all available through the Indiegogo. They were also available on the Kickstarter. Um, they are limited run on the lenticular, um, so they, they're print. There, there won't be any more made. The retailer versions, the two that I showed, are available in stores. However, I just heard that our initial, like we, we oversent by almost a thousand units. I think it was for each cover, thinking that would be plenty. Uh, for for diamond, um, for reorders, and it has it'll hit in stores next week, and we were just told today they are all gone. So <laughs> wow, all right. So we 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 do have more printed, but we were expecting to, to not have to ship those air direct. 
um, yeah. but uh, we may have to. Um, it's it's not a bad problem to have. No, it's right. Not. It's a happy problem. <laughs> yeah, J Pod Studios here says that uh, uh, gonna have to have my. Uh, he's gonna get his doctor to prescribe this comic to him. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm sitting here on the Indiegogo page, so let's take a, a couple of minutes here to uh, talk about the projects that are going on and uh, see if uh, any of our uh, people here in the chat would like to go and support you. Um, now, uh, we have the White Widow Expanded Comics Universe that I'm looking at first, and uh, uh, this uh, Indiegogo itself, basically, what are, you, what are you getting here? If you go and you support this, uh, what, what is it exactly that um, uh, I would get? I mean, what, the, this seems to be something more than White Widow. This seems to be uh, a, a lot of comics. Uh, so uh, tell us exactly a breakdown of what this Indiegogo is, please. So basically, we have nine titles that are uh, all issue ones that are all launching right now. These are all completed at the printer. I sent, actually, like uh, like he said earlier, I sent uh, to one of you guys the... Um, uh, PDFs of, of most of them. Um, so th these are all done and complete um, and uh, at the printer. So these aren't us hoping or trying to, us wanting to make. So these are, I want to, like, these are these are real. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what these are are literally the nine titles uh, of which White Widow is the first and the centerpiece glue uh, of, of, of the line. Okay. And basically looking at your perks here, it looks like uh, we have uh, uh, tier uh, tier one, tier two, et cetera. So let me come down to the tiers, I guess would probably be the easy way, easiest way to do it. So here's tier one. So if I get tier one, which uh, if I come back up here, looks to be... Um, uh, what is that? Fifteen dollars? Uh, no, that's excuse me, that's uh, ten dollars. Uh, you get to pick one of the comics in the list. Okay, okay. And this is a digital comic. Uh, so where do we? Where is it? We start getting into actual physical copies here. That would uh, be that'd be the very first one. You get it. You get a digital comic, and oh. a um, a, and a your choice. By the way, that's one of the cool things with Indiegogo that we found is it allows you to choose. Now, you're not locked into this because we will also use backer kit on the back end of this. Mm -hmm. So it's more like a placeholder. So you know this is what I kind of want. Um, uh, so if you do $30, then that $30 becomes a credit for things on the back. Um, you do get uh, uh, the digital and the physical okay. um, on so each each. So, so what you're saying is for $30 plus shipping, of course, I'm going to get the digital and physical copies of all five books, or, or excuse me, of five books. Correct. Wow. And and you would get uh, digital, yeah, you'd get digital downloads of five books and uh, five books uh, uh, in print. Now, the one thing I will point out is there is a built-in $5 credit for the shipping. In other words, so um, the shipping uh, wherever you are in the world. So if you're in the U.S., um, the shipping base shipping is five dollars. So in other words, it's free shipping um, in the U.S. for most tiers, um, and then everywhere else in the world, it's five dollars less than it would cost to ship. Oh, wow. So. And uh, that's not uh, that's, that's uh, definitely helpful p uh, for people like uh, Booster and I who are living over here on the uh, other side of the planet. Um, but uh, here, so fifty bucks plus shipping, you're getting all nine books uh, from tier one. Now, uh, what uh, explain to me what it's the tier? The tiers are simply different covers, right? Correct. Oh, I see. Correct. Okay, okay. All right. And um, do so, the do so the... yeah. So looking at so look at. So looking at it, the tier ones are the retail edition. So I guess these are going to be the ones that are going to go hit the store Correct. in the near future. Um, then the tier two are the variants. So that's your variant B covers. So um, and then tier three, I guess those are the New York Comic Cons or your Comic Con tiers. Okay. 
Yeah, the, you've got the, the tier threes are the. Uh, yeah. The, you've got the tier threes are the the White Widow mm-hmm. variants. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones Jamie, Jamie with Jamie Tyndall art. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, which I think Look. crazy awesome. Um, uh, and uh, again, those with the, those will all have foil hol- uh, holographic foil logos. Um, wow. as well we, wow. we try and make you can kind of see them we we pictured there um all the kickstarter if you see the um tier five the rare exclusives and tier four as well those are all from the kickstarter as well those also have foil like the what's really cool like my one of my favorites is one g if you can scroll up just a little bit, um, it's the Ryan Kincaid. Not only is the logo red foil, but those lasers are red foil as well. So I'm really looking forward oh, wow. to stuff like that. We're basically we're fans and we like shiny things as well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the spike, for instance, cover up there that j- you just saw, Jamie's, the entire thing's uh, that entire silver background is foil um so all of these things are I, when people actually see the final physical as cool as they are here they're 10 times more awesome in in the final um also jamie and i did uh, as you can see that's the the lenticular mm-hmm. we show yep jamie did jamie did some really really awesome um homage uh, comics to like Spider-Man number one. You can see the uh, the homage to that. Not only did we did we do like the silver and the gold oils on the webbing, these will come back. <laughs> wow. I don't know if you guys remember the Spider-Man number one, Todd McFarlane's. Um, we thought, how cool would it be to actually do bags? Yeah, I see it those. over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that would be cool, dude. Um, and I'm seeing down here metal covers. Yep. Yes. Wow, dude. Now, how are it's those going to hold up, though? Uh, they do really well. We've been doing them for a while. Um, <clears throat> the first person to ever do them, actually, was Brian Polito with Lady Death. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were hugely successful. So what I did is I have a couple girls that work for me. Uh, we invested in the actual presses and the actual system to print our own metal covers. So we actually print them here in St. Louis, and then we size them to the actual cover, the blank sketch cover, and then we we um, we glue them on with like an archival glue um, exactly to the size of the cover, and then that allows them to be CGC'd and fit in bags and everything else. But it's actually a brushed aluminum plate. Yeah, no, I saw some of these at uh, Tokyo Comic-Con actually. Not these, yeah. but, you know, this kind of brushed aluminum plate stuff. Um, it yeah, is they're really cool. cool. White is actually aluminum, so anything white will come through as brushed steel. Wow. Oh. Um, yeah, no, the the art is absolutely killer, Jamie. I mean, oh, thank and, you. Yeah, and and so, and the other art we saw up above here uh, from other people uh, is really good too. So um, now, I guess my question for Benny would be all of these nine books how much did you have to do with uh uh the create the writing of these various books so i i created um amped darkon and dual identity brian augustine does the uh, handle the writing for amped uh mort castle uh, who's a brom stoker award-winning horror novelist uh, did Darkon, and as we said earlier, Elaine Lee did Dual Identity. I wrote and created Katrina, Wayward Legends, and Wayward Sons. Then, of course, Markiplier is a real person. Uh, yes, my my kids <laughs> love Markiplier. Um, so I co-wrote that with him. Basically, he he just made sure that you know the dialogue matched him, and and he was in on the story. Um, it's a fun series that actually, it, it roundabout way takes place. What it does is he gets this strange watch in the mail, doesn't read the instructions, pushes a button on it, and falls into the Absolute Comics universe. And so 
He's bouncing around trying uh, our universe, meeting our different characters, trying to find his way home. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know how many people in here know who Markiplier is, uh, but my kids, this is my son, he loves Markiplier. I'll have to talk to you later about uh, maybe getting a shout out for the boy. He, he would actually faint, I think. Yeah, he is, um, for those who don't know, he's the number one YouTube star in the world. Um, most active, I believe. Um, uh, he was just on Forbes. It's 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 great. Like, we, the joke used to be in TV and stuff where people would say they wanted to make a living playing video games. <laughs> and now you can, you, you can make a l huge living. But we've known him since before he was Markiplier. So his brother is actually a comic book artist who worked with us uh, and still does, um, uh, who does two kinds. And Mark was the tag along little brother to his more famous comic artist brother. Um, oh. His brother made uh, headlines when he, I think it was over $360,000 he made on Kickstarter back in 2011 or 12 or something like that. It was it was it was huge at the time. He was like the record holder, and so we asked him if he would come to the booth at San Diego, and he he asked to bring his brother and told us to put him to work. So we put him on our live stream to to host it, and it helped helped uh, push him. and And he started taking he he wanted to be a YouTube star already, and he started taking it seriously. And uh, he 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 really he works his butt off. Oh yeah, um, I think yeah. like two two videos a day or something uh, most days. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. So uh, and he's a really good guy. He's I, very I, entertaining I as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, so well, yeah, absolutely. even that ties into the absolute universe and what we did with that series. Actually, I can show you if you guys want to see a little bit of it. Um, What's fun? What's fun is for each section of the comic. Every time he goes to, okay, sure. go ahead. Now you're up. All right. So, like, it starts out with this type of art, which we just uh, we got uh, Tina Francesco to do, um, starring him, uh, and he's reading our comics, and then when he goes into uh, our comic world. So here he is with Darkon, and we use the artist from Darkon to draw that section. And then when he goes into Wayward Sons, we use, like, this is Nigel Rayner from Marvel. He's also our artist for Wayward Sons. So every time he's in one of our comic book worlds, we use the artist from that comic to draw that section. Well, wow, that's so, a cool idea. That's a good idea. So yeah, we we just thought it would be a fun visual way to represent him, um, and it's a great way for us to try and introduce a new audience um, in the pot in in the YouTube world to comics because that's really one of the goals that we have is to build comic readership as a whole. Awesome, okay. and it's a lot of the interior arts also made by the cover artists as well or are those just for black the white Will widow exclusive um uh, well for white widow we have the interior jamie does some of the pages uh, and then we have um uh, many of most of the pages are done by an established artist iwan nazif who is phenomenal uh, we we love his stuff. He's a great storyteller. His story, his art is is not uh, subpar at all. Um, <laughs> um, you know, he's he's a professional in 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 every way. Um, then for like Wayward Sons, um, the artist is uh, who does most uh, some of the covers. Most of the covers, I believe, is the same. That's Nigel Rayner, uh, who does the interior. Um, dual identity is is um, uh, Lamb. Uh, you know we Ron Lamb. I wait no Ron. Uh, what's his name? Um, I forgot. Uh, blanking on the name right now. But they're all really really top notch artists. Um, 
and we do have some special artists like Brandon Peterson, who's a friend of mine going way back. Um, I will often do covers for us as well. Um, Jamie has a plethora of, of friends um, who he can, he's calls upon to do the Kickstarter variants and stuff. So, but uh, many of which we're wanting to get involved. Uh, they want to get involved and we want them to get involved with us further and in expanding the absolute comics universe. So this, even though nine titles seems like a lot, it's just the beginning. It really is. And a lot of titles uh, by very wonderful established creators are coming in. Um, and so this is just a really great way to get on the ground floor. Wow. Well, I uh, do have a question here from uh, Jimmy Ames, and he says, uh, show us some more of that internal art. Oh, internal pages? Yeah. I got you white box, Jamie, so if you have, if you can show us that, that uh, you can go okay. right ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have the internal. I, I do, if, if necessary. I think Benny has them over on his side. All right. I basically, dealt, um, so most people know, I dealt with most of the cover issues. Um, like with all the different cover artists um, coming in from different, like there was a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of covers. There's a lot of cover artists. Um, I don't have a lot of the interior art. Um, I don't. That's okay. I, I, I have Benny white boxed. He can uh, turn his camera right. on and show us if he'd like. We don't know. You know, yeah. not, not too much, just a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I'll pull it up uh, here just in a second. I just have to get the, uh, Sure. Sorry. While, while you're yeah. doing that, just to kind of explain, because I think there's some confusion with the Indigo Go project about the tier mm -hmm. levels. So I just want to clarify. Um, sure. So um, when you're looking at the Indiegogo, there's a the picture kind of tells you uh, there's different tiers for different covers, and there's about nine titles altogether. Um, I think what's confusing is just the perks on the side where you're just picking one or two. I think there's actually an option in Indiegogo where you can just select that and you don't need all these perks um, right away. But if you want to just get, say, tier one and just the white uh, widow uh, title, um, you would just go up to the perk that said, you know, tier one. Um, comics pick one and you would pick uh you would hit that perk select the digital comic being you know white whatever widow. you want yeah whatever you want it and but just for the example i'm just saying the white will widow if you wanted both the digital comic and the physical comic to be white widow you could choose those two the physical copy to be white widow and you wanted to try out dual identity because you weren't too sure about it you could do that um but say you're a super backer and you want to you want to check them all out then you would go down to the 50 dollar tier uh where it's a tier one comic pick nine and you would select all of them and you would get all the digitals and all the uh <laughs> all the um, covers for tier one, or you could select nine of the same covers and so nine of the digital. Mm -hmm. If you were a retailer and you wanted to try it out or a small entrepreneur that, you know, wanted to seek it out and give it to your friends or whatever. So that's, that's kind of how the, the perk in this Indiegogo works. And with tier two, tier three, you would just look at here's here's the tier two covers. You would select which one you wanted, and depending on which one, you would pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, and it would increase in price, et cetera, et cetera. Just Correct. to clarify. And it, 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 and, but here's the thing: is it's it, even if you're worrying, oh, I I didn't pick all of them, or or something's weird or I, you know, you could literally pick whatever you want here because it's not going to be finalized. It'll be finalized in backer. Kit. So, and you can always add to in backer kit as well. So backer kit will happen 
after the campaign ends. So there's really not a lot of worry. Um, like you could come in at the, the, the $20 mark and later uh, you'll have, it'll be a little bit easier because it's more of a shopping cart. So you can pick and add this and add that and things like that. So there's really not, uh, uh, it's not that difficult to, uh, to, to work with um, on, on the next phase of this. So yeah. no, um, it, yeah. anyone that... worried about being incorrect? Well, it's okay. really good that you guys are using BackerKit uh, because, uh, you know, this has been, you know, Kickstarter, uh, uh, you know, projects use it a lot. And it's very handy because you can do things after the project. So you get involved in the project, say, you know, oh, I want this $100 tier, but I don't have 100 bucks right now. Well, BackerKit lo allows you to uh, to add on later. Uh, and I really hope that uh, a lot of the uh, uh, the comic books and this indie revival that's going on, I, I hope these uh, uh, creators start using it more. Backer Kid is very useful in that way. Um, yeah, they oh, would for sure. You know, most people don't even realize it, but like one of the hardest things in Kickstarter is actually getting the product to the actual backer. Backer Kit makes the getting all the assembly. The distribution, the mailing, everything, the inventory, it makes it so much easier. It, re it really does. Yeah. Like I, anyone that is even thinking of doing a Kickstarter, you need to do backer kit or else you will literally want to shoot yourself in the head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, I've heard this before. Uh, we do have a question here real quick uh, from John Dilly Game in the System. He says, uh, will White Widow happily snatch the life out of a person or is she against that sort of thing? Um, Actually, if you want, yeah, you can also, I don't know if you have me white boxed uh, or if I'm showing up correctly. I do have the PDF up. Yes, I have you white boxed, yeah. Okay. So one of the things, uh, I'll just slowly scroll through this. You're, you um, guys, uh, you guys are over your goal, by the way. You've made a thousand dollars during the stream. Oh, awesome! Thank you. Thirteen hundred, actually, I think. Uh, oh, that's awesome. That's really great. great. Um, I, and which, by the way, anyone wanting to know, uh, I'll, I, now that we've hit the goal, if we hit ten thousand, which is hopefully doable, um, I'm actually going to throw in a, a, a with every order a free surprise comic so people anyone getting a physical printed uh product will receive an extra comic so well that's very I cool dude awesome this is great interior i love the fact that the art on the interior is the same as the cover we love that over here uh let, hold on a dead let me let me get some of the questions out of the chat here uh <laughs> sure. fair toss bot says wow Boobies. he just blew past the goal yes he did uh jimmy alm says does becker kit work with indiegogo i believe it does yep. yes yeah yes no problem um one of one of the things uh which by the way i, I won I, I didn't mean to to blow past uh, the other guy's uh, question. Um, the uh, I'll put it this way. The phrase that we use in advertising White Widow is, is she a hero, a villain, or something in between? So really her journey is discovering who or, or what kind of person she will become. So uh, she is not afraid, as you can see, um, here quickly, I'll, I'll, and this will be the last page I'll show. Uh, hopefully that answers the question of whether she will kill. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks like she does. Um, <laughs> uh, P.S. Melter <laughs> says, uh, this is like Sexy Venom and uh, Spider-Man. Uh, minus the Eddie Brock shipping. Oh, goodness. Uh, Eric Boy says, Chester, I had checked out this campaign last week. Uh, glad these gentlemen are here this evening. I'm backer number 66. Great concept and art. Looking forward to receive the comic books. Awesome, dude. Uh, uh, awesome. Jimmy. Thank Jimmy, you. Jimmy uh, Ames says, uh, oh, darn, a woman that looks like a woman. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, Chris Davis says, uh, does Jimmy have a YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. And Booster says something that is unnecessary. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any YouTube channel, not yet. Yeah, you I wish so. Start one, dude. Uh, but you guys are, you know, trucking right along. So, uh, you know, you've had a lot of success already. And here this Indiegogo is uh, going successful. So, I mean, you guys do are doing too. Great. It's uh, on a YouTube 
I believe it's White Widow Comics on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a, a lot of girls cosplay my designs, like my Mary Janes, my Gwenums, uh, my Flash designs. I have a lot of cosplayers that cosplay a lot of my stuff because I travel a lot to a lot of the conventions. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole bunch of cosplayers that now have the White Widow suit and they're starting to show up at conventions. That is which cool. is pretty cool when you see them showing up actually right to uh, basically at your booth. I might even be able to let me just see if I can access Instagram from here. Oh, you could, you should be able to, yeah. Awesome. Um, now, would you? I didn't, I don't see it here, but I do see that there's the blank sketch covers. Are do you actually do a sketch if we add it on? I think. For the, uh, yep. the like, yes, I, we do. Yeah, I I don't know if we have that feature. I don't believe we have it in the Indiegogo feature. We we will discuss whether we add that in backer kit um, mm -hmm. at, at that point. Um, but what I wanted to say about this sketch cover, this is a completely unique, one of a kind uh, paper stock. Uh, no one else has it. Uh, Jamie literally was taking around to some of his friends at New York Comic Con saying, do your worst. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing cover stock. But what's mm -hmm. really cool is it also sports a holographic foil logo. Wow. Oh, wow. That is cool. That's sold. I, I, feel, I feel like that sold a copy just now <laughs> yeah no yeah. i mean I, it's, it's an absolutely gorgeous uh, uh project um and uh we're really happy to have you guys on today we are actually way past our time uh but uh oh, no we've really enjoyed sitting here talking to you guys talking about your project of course uh, uh the links have been in the chat and uh we're going to have our moderators drop uh, the links again please and uh you guys just go over and check this but looks like a lot of you have actually uh but uh, go over and check this project out uh, my art book is in the links as well yeah okay yeah okay yeah. uh and i was uh showing that as well i'll come back over here and i'll show that again uh but uh, <clears throat> uh here is uh his uh, art book uh and it's uh that looks really nice as well this is kickstarter however uh but he's got a lot of neat things over here uh, amazing art and uh i like the maxim cover um <laughs> but uh uh thank you guys for joining us uh and uh <laughs> I guess uh, what I'll do real quick here is ask anybody in the panel if they have any further questions uh, before we let you guys go. Uh, how about you, Booster? You got a question for these guys? Yeah, why did you think it was appropriate to race Ben Black Widow? What? <laughs> I, 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 I did warn you guys. I did warn you. Just keep yeah. that in mind. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, how about you, Danelli? You got a question? Um. Uh... I do, but I think I'll tab it for maybe another interview. All right. Um, yeah. How about you, Todd? Yeah. Um, as a company, are you guys looking to? Uh, are you looking for artists or talk about that? Like, because you have some amazing artists, but are, you yeah, know, we're always, always looking for new talent. Are you looking for any new books or are you doing anything like that in that nature? Uh, uh, right. Yes, oh. we, we actually go, go ahead, James. Um, we have other books that are coming down the pipeline that we're working that we're going to basically merge into the White Widow universe. Um, right. We do have like the one thing that we do have is I have a lot of connections with other artists, like like really big name artists in the industry and the it seems like the thing that's going on in the industry right now is a lot of artists that have been in Marvel and in DC want to have their own properties and want to get them on Kickstarter and Indiegogo and start to basically work on their own properties as opposed to necessarily working for the big two companies. And a lot of these guys are approaching us because they see our success and they want to know how to do it. So a lot of the things we're trying to do is kind of get a group of artists together that all have big names and whatnot and bringing them all under kind of or not even a label, but also like help each other mutually to kind of boost what we're doing and and getting our books out there. No, more awesome. about the other that's cool. absolute comics as well. And we're seeing a um, lot of uh, people in the communities doing that. Go ahead, Benny. Yeah, mm -hmm. and 
and that's one of the things too is um, we, for instance, like Jamie said, a lot of the artists are coming in. They've got concepts and stuff, and maybe they're not writers or, or themselves. What we do is we work with them to create the team. Um, some of the guys, some of the guys, for instance, might just be uh, want to do covers because their bread and butter is at one of the big two. We don't care. You know, we we're we're happy to let creators create. That's the bottom line. Is we want to be basically uh, the promise of what uh, you know Image set out uh, or said they were what were setting out to do, and really be there to support the artists and and creators and and help it. at the same time whether they want to be part of our combined universe and be under the absolute uh, comics line or if they want their own independent thing under the red giant banner we have room for both so we're very open to uh, to both of that we are distributed through diamond um and one of the things that we also want to i do want to we didn't touch on is we very much support the retailers even the kickstarter actually sent uh, the way we built the kickstarter it actually sent more people into local comic shops that didn't go to comic shops in general to buy our book because we put on front street hey these retailer editions are cheaper if you go to your local stores and they did and uh, it's it it it's working. We also offered the retailers the ability to take part in the Kickstarter stuff, as well as exclusives of their own. We had so far two different stores, uh, Three Alarm and what's the other one, Jamie? Uh, oh, the, the, I can't remember. The, we have a uh, one in England and then um, another one, I think, in Florida. I just can't remember the actual retailers by the name. Um, the the guys who did oh, oh, Canada is the other one. I thought the the British company. Uh, that's shit. I'd have to look. I can't remember. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to. Start. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but the bottom line is, is we very much wanted to support that. But so we're we're about supporting the creators, the fans. Um, so we are open to creators coming in. In fact, when I do comic book conventions. Um, one of the things I do uh, quite often is my panel is not about promoting our stuff uh, as much as it is. I literally will do topics like how to break into comics uh, or how to write comics or, or things like that. So, in, in fact, um, as Jamie said, issue two, uh, issue one and issue two have cover artists that are completely unknown uh, for the most part, uh, I think we have three covers from a fairly unknown artist in issue oh, yeah. in issue two that are just amazing. Um, uh, in fact, so unknown on cover artists that I did a cover for issue one and issue two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, um, we we do <laughs> we do <laughs> the chat. Uh, we do have a, a a question from the chat though. Uh, uh, I noticed on your uh, sketchbook, uh, you had a uh, lady who was garbed in a Canadian-based uh, costume. Uh, what is her name? Uh, so that is, well, you were asking about other books. Um, that will be a book that Benny and I are working on probably in the spring mm -hmm. for Toronto Comic-Con launch. Uh, the book is going to be called Northern Cross. It's basically our Canadian superhero team. Her code name is Maple Sugar. Um, the beaver beside her is called Woody. And there are about six other characters involved in that book as well. And it's basically our Canadian superhero team that eventually White Widow will become a part of or cross over with as well. So basically what you're saying is you have a very sexy Canadian lady who has a sidekick who is named uh, Beaver. Uh, named Woody, and he's a No, beaver. Woody. Woody. Okay, okay, yeah. He's oh, a very man. angry cow beaver. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, okay. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Woody's going to be a big hit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's kind of like, I always was a big fan of Rocket, the raccoon, and he's our comic relief in the book. Um, he, <laughs> uh, there's another character named Snowflake. Um, it's a battle bear. Um, I'm I, a he, bear. You, I like bears. 
battle bear. He rides on a polar bear. Uh, the battle bear can like change forms and stuff like that. It's um, it's a uh, Inuit legend, uh, shapeshifters, skinwalkers, that kind of thing. Oh, I see. Uh, that's where the battle bear comes from. Yeah. There's okay. also uh, There's our brawler. Speakers, in the be sure not to give away, Jamie. <laughs> our <laughs> brawler in the book, a French Canadian goalie named Jacques LeBlanc. Uh, and there'll be other characters too. It's it's more of a fun spin on the superhero genre. Um, you know, uh, Canadians are all over the world. There's tons of them. Um, we always have a pretty good sense of humor and we can laugh about ourselves. And uh, I always think like when I travel around a lot, um, there seems to be this fascination with Canadians when we travel around. So uh, anyway, I just think it'll be a fun book to do and um, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm trying um, to find uh, a picture I, of Woody, but I can't. Uh, uh, I think oh, he I, should be on the. He's on the bottom. Actually, here, give me one second. I can bring it into my computer. Uh, give me one well, while, while he's doing that, if you, I don't know if you want, you guys want a sneak peek of for issue two. We have our first bona fide super villain, um, which yeah. is on my screen right now, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and that's I. I was lucky enough that 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 is my cover. For issue two, um, and this is a new character called Pulse, who will be the first actual super villain in our universe. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like zippers. She really does not like zippers. Yeah. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And then on no. my screen, I've got the Captain Canada one up now with the polar bear and Woody. Yeah. Well. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right then. Uh, but uh, no, because we have a creator in our community who has a character called Canadian Shield. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, I interesting here. But uh, she is, uh, uh, her name again is Nor uh, Northern Cross, you said, right? Uh, the book is Northern Cross. Her name is Maple Sugar. Of course it is. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want this book already. Bodero well, says she yeah. is an angry well, beaver. Book. Yes, she does. Um, I don't know if you guys, I mean, I'm Canadian and American, but uh, hmm. where I grew up. Can we talk more about her beaver, please? <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's an ancient battle beaver. <laughs> oh my! Mm. Goodness mm. gracious! You don't see I'm trying that to behave. Marvel. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his weakness is if you shave him. Yeah. Drawing of him. I'm just saying that's how I prefer. <laughs> Oh, that no. is awesome. Uh, but <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, actually, your uh, sketchbook jumped up quite a bit, too. Um, so oh, the, thank you very much, guys. Uh, you you are supporting uh, these guys a lot, and, uh, it, and it's a great project to back, I think. So uh, thanks for all the Absolutely. support coming out of the chat, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, uh, there's a lot of comments about beavers in Canada. Uh, but, uh, you know. Well, I think he's got a snowball gun. Uh, that's his weapon. It's exploding snowballs. Sweet. Yeah, <laughs> you should get that as out as quick as possible because Booster will, will buy a hundred of them. A um, <laughs> hundred? Oh yeah, big time! Ancient angry beaver. That's right, Thunder. Uh, but uh, all right, guys, uh, we are certainly way past our time because uh, I definitely have to get over to Drone Recorded here uh, shortly. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, thank you two for being here. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It's an absolutely be a beautiful project, um, and it's cool that you guys are doing a lot of things to, uh, you know, help the the community uh, with artists and putting out really good stuff and not being afraid to do what it what it is you want to do, man. And uh, mm -hmm. we love and appreciate that. And uh, as you can see, the chat gave you a lot of love today, so thanks you guys. Um, and uh, sure. yeah, no, we're gonna have to cut it here. Uh, we usually do some news in today, but Thank what I'll do. Oh. All the all the followers that followed us too. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to go back and relabel this episode because there was no news beyond this news that was taking place. But I'll I'll change the name of this. Uh, this we uh, lied to you all. We We're did. sorry. We did, uh, but that's okay. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So uh, thank you, Benny, and uh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, guys, the links are in the chat. Uh, go over there and check them out. And give them all the love they deserve, please. Uh, but uh, yeah. You guys have any closing statements? Um, oh, thank you no. very much for having us on. And uh, to all the fans out there, too, and all your fans that have, like, come and become our fans now, uh, thank you very much. And we keep putting out books, and we hope you guys keep reading them.
Absolutely. And, and, and we appreciate the, the, we appreciate everyone, you know, so mm -hmm. you guys are awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, cool. Stay tuned for more. Battle Beavers. <laughs> yes. More battle beaver. I think that will sell well. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Guys. Now you two guys hang on here. Cause, uh, we're, we're going to get off the live stream, but, uh, you know, hang on, you don't have to drop out just yet. Uh, but, uh, thank you guys all for coming. And, uh, as usual, we're going to have Danelli take us out. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for today's show. It wasn't Comic Steve today, but you can call it a mini special fan speak with Jamie and Benny. And it was awesome that you gave all the support. So thank you so much for that. But as always, your perception shapes your reality. So always make it a good one. Namaste. Nam Namaste. Mm -hmm. Later, guys. <laughs>